So we're going <laughs> to plant a few seeds and give a little history and uh, for the past and the future and sing God Bless America. How many know that? Oh. <laughs> okay, here are the words. God Bless America, the land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam, God bless America, my home sweet home. Okay, one more time. God bless America, my home sweet home. Irving Berlin. And Lord knows she needs it. documents written throughout human history and most recently was the Magna Carta in the 1200s and then the Mayflower Compact in the 1600s by the Mayflower pilgrims who who defied their king in England and came to the United uh, to America and wrote the Mayflower Compact in the cabin of the Mayflower and it's a, just one little paragraph but just so you can see where this urge of freedom came through to America and joined with the Native Americans to become the American mind, spirit, and democracy. So, here it is. Having undertaken for the glory of God and advancement of the Christian faith in honor of our king and country, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia, do by these presents solemnly and mutually in the presence of God and one another, covenant and combine ourselves together in a civil body politic for our better ordering and preservation and furtherance of ends for aforesaid, and by virtue hereof to enact, constitute, and frame such just and equal laws, ordinances, acts, constitutions, and offices from time to time as shall be thought most meet and convenient for the general good of the colony, unto which we promise all due submission and obedience. In witness whereof, we have here under us subscribed our names at Cape Cod, the 11th of November, in the year of the reign of our Lord Sovereign King James of England, France, and Ireland, the 18th, and of Scotland, the 54th. So, equal and just laws serving the common good. That's the basis of democracy. And the Native Americans were practicing participatory democracy when we arrived, and the spiritual alignment of the Mayflower Pilgrims and the Native Americans they met led to 50 years of peace and friendship, that the synthesis of which brought the American mind and spirit and democracy. So, the Declaration of Independence, what we have here, where did it go? Here is the, this is the first, a copy of the first broadside that was sent out to the colonies in, on July 4th, 1776. It's called the Dunlap Broadside. And a broadside is just what you're looking at. It was sent to all the churches, all the colonies. It was to be read so that all people could understand what was going on with the war for independence. So I'm going to read the, um, a bit of the preamble just so we have some idea of, of what the promise was we made to the world that it brought all people to our shores, seeking freedom, seeking this birthright that we promised we could be and that the founders had a vision we could become. It's been a process. It's still a process. It's up to us to do it. It's not like, oh, we failed. It's like, oh, we have to show up and do it. And it's what's happening now with the climate crisis and everything. Every, people are being catalyzed into their hearts and moving with technology and 
and, and, and coming together, we're creating a new world. And with what Sunrise Ranch is doing, with holding the spiritual um, substance of the human spirit. So that's what it's about. It's about bringing us into alignment in God we trust. You know, that's on every coin we have. And that's what this, this country is founded on. And right in the middle of trust is U.S. And that's U.S. United States, and that's us. So it's up to us. And so here is the unanimous de declaration of the 13 United States of America. When, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of God, nature's gods entitle them, nature's God entitles them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Anybody know this by heart? Mm -hmm. That all men are created equal, and women, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light or transient causes, and accordingly all experience hath shown that mankind are most more disposed to suffer while e evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object ev evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. <clears throat> such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present King of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct ob object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. And then there's a long list of facts. Here is the end. We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress assembled, appealing to the Supreme Judge, capital S, capital J, of the world for the recessitude, rectitude, excuse me, of our intentions, do, in the name and by authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are, and of right, ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British Crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved, and that as free and independent states, they have the full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and to do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. So this is a trust-based paradigm. These folks turned themselves over to divine providence. and. I don't know how many of you know what ever happened to the 56 men who signed the Declaration of Independence. They were men of wealth and station, and several of them, 20, uh, let's see, whatever. Um, tw uh, let's see. Uh, a wealthy planter and trader saw his ship swept from the seas by the British Navy. He sold his home to pay his debts. 
Um, some of them were hounded by the British. It was forced to move his family almost constantly. He served in the Congress without pay, and his family was kept in hiding. His possessions were taken from him, and poverty was his reward. Vandals or soldiers looted the property of several of them. In the Battle of Yorktown, uh, uh, his home was destroyed and he died bankrupt. I'm just not naming these folks because they're not people we recognize. Uh, another gentleman had his home and properties destroyed. The enemy jailed his wife and she died within a few months. So these people um, really put their lives and fortunes and sacred honor on the line for liberty and for us, for what we have today. And it's just a matter of what we're going to do for the future generations. And now that we're faced with the fact that this democracy doesn't work and hasn't worked, it never was a proper democracy. It was a, a what Barbara calls a win-lose democracy. Majority rules, 51% get what they want, 49% lose out. And this is not a true democracy. And Barbara has, this is Barbara Marks Hubbard. Would you like to come up, Barbara, <laughs> and share a little of your thoughts? Barbara has, has a solution, has an idea of synergistic democracy. And there are, there are there's technology now and, and, and concepts in this emergent world as the uh, homo universalis becomes born and we all become in a line with our hearts and, and tr the true natural law that is um, spoken of in the Declaration of Independence. And she has some practical solutions. So Barbara Marks Hubbard okay. herself, the mother Woo. of conscious evolution. Thank you so much. Do you want the microphone? Yes. 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 You know, it's really wonderful to hear those words again, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, we know them well, but we don't constantly remember them, and we need to remember them right now, because we're at a shift point in democracy. We're at a point in democracy where it either is going to go down into further control and, and, and fake news and loss of freedom, or it's going to go a new direction. And so as a true citizen of the United States of America, it is our opportunity to say where it should go. <clears throat> if they could be that brave, so can we. And here's where I think it is going already. It just hasn't been fully noticed. It's going to a new kind of democracy that's looking for common goals and matching needs with resources in such a way to see if we can make the system work for the whole. And everywhere there are small groups doing that, but they have not been brought together yet. So I will just tell you one brief story. In, in 1984, I decided to run for Vice President of the United States in order to bring a new function into democracy. And the function was called the, pe the Peace Room as Sophisticated as a War Room. And its purpose was to scan for, map, connect, and communicate what's working in the world. And it was the office of the Vice President whose job it was every week to tell the world what's working and to invite the citizens not only of the United States but of the world to participate. <clears throat> so of course it was like a mad quest. But everywhere I went, small groups formed that wanted to do it themselves. It wasn't so much they cared whether I got to be vice president, but they wanted to find out what was working in their communities. So 90 positive future centers formed. And all of them were actually replicating a more synergistic democracy naturally. Mm. So when I got to the uh, <clears throat> convention, they said, well, don't do go to San Francisco, Barbara. You'll be complete. You can't even get in to the to convention, much less get nominated. You've done a great job, and please stop. So this is a bit of faith. I turned within, and the inner voice says, go to San Francisco. <laughs> OK. So I went to San Francisco. I got in through the wife of the governor of Colorado. I had no passes to the floor. Neither did my team. And I do want to tell you that I got nominated. And um, what happened was I got like South Dakota at 5.30 AM. 
they never heard of me, I never heard of them. And I had to say, I'm Barbara Marks Herbert, I'm running for vice president. I would like to make a speech from the platform of the Democratic National Convention that the Democratic Party is here to identify, connect, and communicate what's working in the world. And if you nominate me, I'll give my votes to Geraldine Ferraro. Hmm. And by golly, I got over 200 signatures, and I was the other woman whose name was placed in nomination for vice president. <laughs> <clears throat> totally unbelievable. And when I got up there, the guard, well, all these senators were watching me go up, and they'd say, who in the world is this woman? How did this happen to us? The Democratic Party was distressed, but there it was. And so the, the guard whispered in my ear. He said, now, honey, don't pay any attention. No one will pay any attention to you. You're saying it for the universe. You will never know failure again, said the guard. So I did that. And I would just like to conclude with my favorite new Thomas Jefferson statement. Remember, we hold these truths to be self-evident. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All people are born creative. Endowed by our creator with the inalienable right and responsibility to express our creativity for the good of ourselves and for the whole Earth family. Thank you. Oh.